Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over four worked examples to show you how to do problems involving Einstein's mass energy equivalents. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to understand what we do in this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says mass can be changed into energy. How much energy can be produced from a 1 kilogram of material? Well here we just want to use our equation for Einstein's mass energy equivalence which is E equals mc squared. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the energy E. We know the mass m is 1 kilogram here and the speed of light c in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So writing down our equation, we have E equals mc squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1 times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared which equals 9 times 10 to the 16 joules. And for part B, how much energy can be produced from 75 kilograms of material? Well, we could do the same again, so we're trying to find the energy E. We know the mass this time is 75 kilograms, and the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Writing down our equation, we have E equals mc squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 75 times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared, which if you put into your calculator should give you an answer of 6.8 times 10 to the 18 joules. Or a quicker way to do this is to simply just multiply your answer from part A by 75 to get the same answer. And lastly, part C, how much energy can be produced from 4 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms of material? Well, same again, our energy E is what we're trying to find. Mass here is 4 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms this time, and the speed of light is the same, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So writing down our equation, we have E equals mc squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 4 times 10 to the minus 6 times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 3.6 times 10 to the 11 joules. Question 2 says energy can be changed into mass. How much mass is produced from a 1 joule of energy? Well, writing down what we know this time, we're trying to find the mass m. We know that the energy E is 1 joule, and the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So writing down our equation, we have E equals mc squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1 is equal to m times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And if you then want m on its own, you can do 1 divided by this answer, which if you put into your calculator will give you an answer of 1.1 times 10 to the minus 17 kilograms. For part b, we want to know how much mass is produced from 75 joules of energy this time. Well, again, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the mass m. We know that energy E is 75 joules this time, and the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Writing down our equation, we have E equals mc squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 75 on this side equals m times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And again, getting mass on its own, we can divide 75 by 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 8.3 times 10 to the minus 16 kilograms for m. And lastly, for part C, how much mass is produced from 4 times 10 to the power of minus 6 joules of energy? Well, again, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the mass m. We know the energy E is 4 times 10 to the minus 6 joules, and the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Writing down our equation, we have E equals mc squared. Substituting in our numbers gives 4 times 10 to the minus 6 equals m times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And again, we want m on its own, so we can divide both sides by 3 times 10 to the 8 squared to get m equals 4.4 times 10 to the minus 23 kilograms. Question 3 says the following statement represents a nuclear reaction. So we have plutonium-240 decaying into uranium-236 plus an alpha particle, a helium nucleus. And it says the table shows the masses of the particles involved in this reaction. So there's our mass of the plutonium particle, 398.626 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. We've got the mass of the uranium particle, 391.970 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And lastly, the mass of the alpha particle, which is 6.645 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Part A says to state the total mass before the reaction. Well, if we look back at the reaction, remember the only thing on the left-hand side was the plutonium nucleus. So we just need the mass of that to give us the total mass on the left-hand side. So that means we can state that the mass is this number here. So we have that total mass before is equal to 398.626 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. For part B, we're asked to calculate the total mass after the reaction. Well, again, if we look back at the reaction, you can see we've got the uranium nucleus plus the alpha particle after the reaction. So to find the total mass after the reaction, we just need to add these two masses. So that will be this mass added to this mass. So we have that total mass after is equal to 391.970 times 10 to the minus 27 plus 6.645 times 10 to the minus 27. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 398.615 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Part C says to determine the mass lost after the reaction. Well, remember all we need to do is take the total mass before and subtract the total mass after. So we have that the mass lost is equal to 398.626 times 10 to the minus 27 
minus 398.615 times 10 to the minus 27. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.1 times 10 to the minus 29 kilograms. And make sure in your calculator that you're not rounding off any numbers at this stage. Make sure you keep all the digits in your masses. And you'll need to be careful as well when putting all these numbers into the calculator because it can be easy to make a mistake and enter the wrong digit. Lastly, part D says to calculate the energy released in this reaction. Well, writing down we know from the question, we're trying to find the energy E. We know the lost mass M is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 29 kilograms from part C here, and the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Writing down our equation, we have E equals MC squared. Substituting in our numbers gives us 1.1 times 10 to the minus 29 times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. Lastly, question 4 says the following statement represents a nuclear reaction. So we have this unknown element X plus hydrogen 2, 1, which is decaying into two alpha particles, i.e. helium nuclei, plus a neutron plus energy. It then says the masses of some of the particles involved in this reaction are shown in the table. So we have the mass of the hydrogen 2, which is 3.342 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The mass of the alpha particle, which is 6.642 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms and the mass of a neutron, which is 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Part A says to use the data booklet to identify the element X. Well, if we look back at the reaction, we can work out what A and Z are just from knowing the conservation rules. So remember for nuclear reactions, we say the mass number and the atomic number must be conserved. So that means the total mass number here, the numbers on the top, must equal the total numbers on the top on this side, and the total numbers on the bottom, the atomic number, must add up on this side to give the same number as the total numbers on the bottom of this side. So because we know the numbers on the right hand side, let's add those up to find what our total numbers should be. Well here we've got an alpha particle of helium 42 but we've got two of them, so that means we need to multiply these numbers by two. So we're going to have two times four, which is eight, plus one there from the neutron, plus nothing for the energy. So we've got nine as our total mass number on this side. And for the atomic number, we've got two times two, which is four, plus zero, plus zero. So that gives us four for the atomic number. So that means that my mass number plus the two here must add up to nine. So if I do nine minus two, that gives me my mass number A here. And we can do four minus the one, which will give us our atomic number number 3 here. So we have A is 7 and Z is 3. So writing that down here, we have A equals 7 and Z equals 3. So if we consult our periodic table from the data booklet, we've said that our unknown element has a mass number of 7 and an atomic number of 3. So if we look here in the key, we can see the atomic number is stated first. So we want to look for atomic number 3, which is over here. So you can see that atomic number 3 is for lithium, Li. So that means lithium must be the unknown element X. So we can say that X is equal to lithium, which has the symbol Li. And for part B, it says the energy released in this reaction is 2.97 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. Calculate the mass of the nucleus XAZ. So that's our lithium nucleus that we could now write as Li73. Well, notice first of all that this question is different to what we were asked for in question 3 because we were asked to calculate the energy in question 3, but here we are given the energy released and we're asked to calculate the mass of the nucleus. So the first step here would be to find the mass lost in the reaction. So let's use our equation E equals mc squared to find what m is. So writing down we know from the question we're trying to find m, we know the energy released E is 2.97 times 10 to the minus 12 joules and the speed of light C is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So writing down our equation, we have E equals mc squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 2.97 times 10 to the minus 12 is equal to m times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And dividing both sides by 3 times 10 to the 8 squared in your calculator should give you an answer of m equals 3.3 times 10 to the minus 29 kilograms. So that's us got the mass lost in the reaction, but now we want to find the total mass before the reaction. And we can do this using the lost mass and the total mass after the reaction. So looking back at a reaction, remember after the reaction we have two alpha particles plus a neutron plus energy. There's no mass given for the energy though, so we can just ignore that just now. So we want to add up two times the mass of the alpha particle plus the mass of the neutron. So we're trying to find the total mass before. We know the total mass after is equal to 2 times 6.642 times 10 to the minus 27 plus 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.4959 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. Notice how I'm not rounding any answers here. And then because we know the mass lost is equal to the total mass before minus the total mass after, we can put our numbers in to find the total mass before. So we have that 3.3 times 10 to the minus 29 from earlier is equal to total mass before minus 1.4959 times 10 to the minus 26 from here. So if we add this value to both sides, then we get total mass before is equal to 1.4992 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. 
So looking back at our reaction again, we now have a value for the total mass before this reaction, but we want to find the mass of the element x. So what we need to do is just subtract the mass of the hydrogen particle to find the mass of our element x, our lithium nucleus. So we can say lastly, determine the mass of x. So we know the mass of x is equal to 1.4992 times 10 to the minus 26, i.e. the total mass before, minus the mass of the hydrogen particle. So that is equal to 1.4992 times 10 to the minus 26, minus 3.342 times 10 to the minus 27 from the table. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.165 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.